Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. The same young lady is at the place of business. What the f is going on? Zip up your pants. Put your little pie tiny back in it. Panty sniffing. Is this kind of freaky? Like From cheater surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. You can feel in your heart when something's not right. No other woman has made me feel the way she does. We don't do this to the people that love you. I can live with the truth, but I can live with nice. I'm lost. I feel like I'm by myself. This is not the way we're supposed to end. Concerns about her lover's emotional unavailability. At her wit's end, Angela turns to the professionals at Cheaters. Angela Tolan, age 29. A researcher worried that her boyfriend checks out what other women have to offer. Um, when and I first met, like I said, it was love at first sight. We fell in love with each other. It was wonderful. Recently, the past few months, he's just seemed distant. There's been an air, some kind of energy that just, something hasn't felt right. I don't feel sexy anymore when I'm with him. He doesn't make me feel like he wants me. He's been getting up at night, going on the computer late at night, and I went ahead and decided to check it out, see what he was doing, and he got kind of nervous, was surprised that I was there quickly got off and said that he was doing some foreign ex foreign car exchange over the internet. I'm not sure, something to do with his work. And the next day I went ahead and checked the call, the history on the, on the internet. And I found out that he was on a um, 30 singles chat site, which was definitely not what he had told me. My mom never liked him and for me to defend him all of these years, all of these years to everybody I've known and then for, for them to prove me, for him to prove them right is just, it's too much, it really is. Apology, groveling, he can do all that, but it won't change how I feel. Once you cross me, that's it. There's no turning back. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Suspect's identity withheld, age 32. An import car salesman suspected of test driving another woman. Investigation day three. After getting word from headquarters, detectives post up outside the suspect's auto dealership. Agents on stakeout, using high-powered lenses, spy the suspect, whose identity remains withheld, conducting some business on his cell phone. A few minutes later, an unknown car pulls in and parks on the lot. Operatives notice an unknown female approach. The two share a quick kiss hello before she presents him with a gift. Pleasantly surprised with his present, the suspect thanks his female friend, bestowing gifts of affection upon her. The two then head indoors, where the suspect seats his companion in the driver's seat of a convertible for a test drive. P.I.s track the couple a few miles down the road to a bar and grill. Once inside, the pair share some beers and wings while they get more acquainted. Having had their fill of foam and foul, 
The companion drives the suspect back to his place of business, and the two disappear inside. A few hours later, the pair emerge. The suspect walks his companion to her car. The couple hug and kiss goodbye before parting ways for the evening. Investigation day five. Gumshoes once again set up a perimeter around the suspect's place of business. A few hours into their shift, P.I. spot the suspect leaving for the day. Detectives follow him down a toll road to a local watering hole. Inside, he meets with his previous companion, now identified as Jana McMahon. He appears to be interrupting a girl's night out as Ms. McMahon and her friends boogie down on the dance floor. They retire to play darts, and sometime later, the gang emerges through the front door. After brief goodbyes, they separate into factions. The suspect and his companion retire to the woman's home, where the two get hot and heavy by her front doorway. The suspect seems ready to take things upstairs, but Miss McMahon shoots him down, leaving her wound up man wanting more. Needing a release, the sex-starved suspect puts the moves on his unsuspecting girlfriend, Angela. Hey, babe, what's up? Hey, um, how much longer do you think you're going to be? I don't know, babe. It's going to be late. It's got some new cars in. It has a picture description. This is the third time this week you've been working late. This is ridiculous. Trust me, I'd much rather be at home with you than look here with these stupid cars. You know, this is what I do. I mean, I'm, uh... Investigation day 10. Once again entrenched in a perimeter around the suspect's workplace, agents wait for movement. Detectives tail the mark down a familiar path that leads them to Ms. McMahon's residence. The suspect greets his well-dressed companion at the door, and after a hug hello, the dolled-up duo depart. A few miles away, they arrive at a restaurant known for its four-star fare. After dropping the car with a valet, the couple adjourn to the patio for cocktails. Upon finishing their lavish libations, the suspect and his companion get up close and personal while waiting for their car. Now back in the driver's seat, the suspect and Ms. McMahon set forth to their next destination. The two arrive at a historical landmark several miles away. The playful couple get out and patrol the grounds before taking a seat on a bench across from a beautiful fountain. While sharing an intimate moment on the bench, Ms. McMahon decides she needs to cool off by taking a dip in the water. She proceeds to splash her man, and soon, egged on by his capricious counterpart, the suspect wades into the water. Having had their fill of aquatic fun for the evening, the pair return to the McMahon house. Unlike previous days, tonight, Ms. McMahon leads the suspect upstairs to the promised land. In the middle of the night, Angela's boyfriend emerges and heads to the home he shares with a yearning Angela. Coming up, the confrontation. With the suspect's shocking behavior well documented, cheaters must divulge the video footage to Angela. Anxious to end her uncertainty, Angela must find the courage to face her fears. Angela, thanks for being with us this afternoon. I know this is very short notice. We paid you up. Your mom's here with us as well. Today we have some information that we thought it would be important for you to see. Are you ready to go ahead and look at that? Yeah, please. Angela, as our investigation began, we had a detective outside of the office. On this afternoon, a female arrives. They greet one another. She gives him a package. There's a kiss. They go inside briefly, get into a vehicle, but now she drives in that vehicle until they arrive at a restaurant. They go inside, share some finger food, 
in conversation. And later that evening, they come back out. On this evening, our detective was outside of the business where he works. On this night, he leaves and goes back to the residence where he dropped off the same young lady that he's been spending quality time with. Picks her up. They were followed to a, a historical landmark downtown. Spent some time sitting on one of the benches. It's apparent that he's got more than friendship on his mind. I've been there with him. He's taken me there. Angela, the reason that we had to do this, our detective let us know that the same young lady that we've seen is at place of business. Yeah, we just finished up with the with the interview. Are they still at a shop? Evidently, she got there about 45 minutes to an hour ago. She brought food. They're still there now. Okay. Are you gonna be okay, Angela? She's still there. Okay, we'll be there in about five minutes. It's okay. There's our guy. Yeah, it's right here. Listen up, everybody, get on out. Everybody, get on out. Okay. Tighter, tighter. All right, let's get everybody in tight. Get oh, sorry, someone helped out. That's okay. Here, hold oh. this. Watch your step. Watch it across the street. Please, stop. Where? 
Where is he? What? Where is he? Penny sniffing mother is this kind of freaky you like? Smell him! Smell him, you wanna don't you ass Damn Psycho one time. One time my ass! No, no, no. We'll go home. We'll go home. No, we'll go home, Angela. We're gonna go home. No challenger. Haven't you done enough? unveils how Angela's story ends. But next, Cheaters presents Brenda Martinez, a former client wishing to discuss her circumstances in greater detail and clear the air for good. Brenda Martinez, age 31. Brenda walks us through her experience on the show. Ask him why he, he was lying, why he was with another friend or girlfriend, I don't know, um, why he was lying. What are you doing in here? Huh? Who's, who's she? Who's a friend. Tell me. No. Who is that? Hey, 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 hey. Come here. Who are you? Who are you? It's una amiga. Una amiga? Si. Sí. Una amiga con la que no. te ves? No. He make a lot of promise, but he always say that before this. about the suspect's betrayal. She understands that the suspect had his reasons, but the devastation he caused is too much for her to bear. The suspect admits to the disregard of his relationship with Angela and offers a heartfelt apology. In defense of his shameful actions, the suspect offers Cheater's producers this statement. Sometimes you don't realize what you got till it's gone. Unfortunately, it took losing her to realize how amazing Angela was. Jenna McMahon would not return calls to comment.
Now remember, if you don't get your programming from Goldstein's, why we'll both lose money. Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. They went ahead to the concert. There's some band called Trap. I can't explain nothing to you. From cheater surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. You can feel in your heart when something's not right. No other woman has made me feel the way she does. You don't do this to the people that love you. I can live with the truth, but I can't live with the lies. I'm lost. I feel like I'm by myself. This is not the way we're supposed to end. Episode of Cheaters. Please meet Carrie Ivy, a young woman concerned with her boyfriend's recent unavailability. Needing to address the matter, Carrie seeks professional assistance from Cheaters. Carrie Ivy, age 29, a masseuse worried that her boyfriend offers other available females rub downs. In the beginning, when me and Brandon first met, it was just an instant connection. About a year ago, I noticed changes in his character. I can't even express myself to him anymore. And it, you know, I try to talk to him and it's just no use. It's dragging me down a lot and it really, you know, I've actually even had to get on antidepressants. I want to know why. I want to know why and what I could have done to make him go to somebody else because I do everything I can for him to make him happy. And I just want him a part of my life again. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Brandon Cross, age 31. A sales manager suspected of trying to generate and develop new opportunities with female clientele. Investigation day two. Getting the go-ahead from headquarters, a surveillance team sets up outside the home Carrie shares with the suspect. Carrie has informed Cheater's producers that she'll be out of town on business for the next few days. With this knowledge, Cheater's PIs observe suspect Brandon Cross departing from the house. Detectives follow Cross to a super center where he runs inside. Cross emerges carrying flowers and then departs. Cheaters' gumshoes track their mark a few miles away to an unknown residence. Cross pulls up and, after knocking, presents the unknown female who opens the door with a bouquet of flowers. The couple get into the suspect's car and depart back to his house. After being obfuscated for a few hours, Cross and his companion emerge and drive to her home, ending this day of investigation. Investigation Day 4 with Carrie still out of town on business, P.I. set up a perimeter around the client and suspect's residence. 
Cross makes his way across town to the companion's residence from prior surveillance. Cross's companion, identified only as Candy, gets into his ride and the couple roll out. Gumshoes track the duo a few miles down the road to a local Mexican cantina, where the couple dip inside for some chips and salsa. Detectives capture footage of the pair eating and making merry. Cross demonstrates his management skills with this recorded phone call with Carrie. Hello? I've been trying to call you all day. Where you been? In meetings with Jake and Scott. Why didn't you call me back? Because we're working. I can't stop for you or anyone you else. You always call me back. Sorry, I don't know what you want to say. What have you been doing? Talking with uh, clients. Who? Jake and Scott. Why can't you just call me back? Because I was busy. Too busy to call me back. Just Absolutely. To call me back. You can't even just text me or something. No, doing work, work is work. I just want to hear back from you. You got a freaking cell phone. Look, if you don't blame me or trust me, then, you know, I'm done with this conversation. After dinner, Cross and his companion head back to Cross's residence, where they remain for the rest of the day. Investigation Day 8. After tailing the suspect all afternoon, detectives follow Cross to a jewelry store. Inside, Cross examines a ring, judging it on its cut, clarity, and color. Having made his decision, Cross purchases the ring. The suspect then once again picks up his companion, and the two make their way to a nearby park. Detectives watch as Cross creates a romantic spread for his flame, complete with high-dollar champagne. Cross and Candy sit and enjoy his thoughtful presentation. The lovebirds nibble bread and cheese while sipping champagne. With romance in the air and the diamond ring in his hand, Cross blindfolds his lady love and then gets down on one knee. As Candy removes her blindfold, Cross pops the question. Candy, amazed by this grand gesture, appears to say yes, and the two celebrate their new engagement with a long kiss. Sometime later, Cross and his fiancée follow each other back to his house, where they remain for the rest of the day. Coming up, the confrontation. With the suspect's misdeeds brought to light, Cheaters rushes to inform Carrie of his undercover activities. Prepared for the looming results, Carrie quietly mulls things over before learning the truth. Carrie, thank you for being with us this evening. I'm not going to take any more time. I know you're anxious to see the information that our detectives have. Are you prepared to look at that now? As our investigation began, we had a detective that was outside of your home. You know, I know you travel frequently. Yeah. This was at a time that you were out of town. Brandon leaves, detective follows him to a market. He enters, comes out with some flowers. From there, he was followed to a residence where he goes inside, exits a short time later with a young lady who is holding flowers. They get in his truck and then they go back to your home. They go inside for a short period of time. Brandon and this young lady return back to her home. There's an embrace and a kiss at the door before he drives off. On this day, Carrie, Brandon was seen as he left. He was followed to a jewelry store where he evidently picked up a bauble of some sort. He goes back home, loads the car up with a ice chest and some other paraphernalia. There looked like there was a blanket goes and picks up the same young lady. And our detective followed the two of them until they arrived at a park. Once there, they spread out a blanket. And we can see that this is turning into 
somewhat of a romantic event. He blindfolds her. Oh my god, I hate him. That sorry son of a bitch. Oh my god. Oh my god. I am gonna kick his ass. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just don't understand why he's doing this to me. to find out if you want to. Yes, I want to. Let's push you back over here and we'll go to try and find out the answers to some of these questions. I'm going to go ahead and try and get a hold of the detective now and see if he can give me an update. We just finished up with a briefing and we're on the move right now. Earlier this evening, he picked up the young lady then they went ahead to the concert. All right, we'll look for it as we come in. Look for a detective. There he is right there. Okay, you ready? Too. Get in the car I am not trying to control for you. You're done 
Come on, that's to avoid this situation, man. Go with your sorry little bitch. Come on. Your sorry little bitch. Go get in your little trailer and roll it on somewhere, okay? That's what you're doing. Oh, you, you little. Come on, ladies, 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 ladies. Get in the truck. We're done. That's just you. You know, there's no. There's a drink on me, bitch. I saw your Walmart ring, you skank. I saw your Walmart ring. No, no, just... Yeah. just go. Right, Would you get the f out of my sight? Go. See get your f ass out of here. Just go. Watch out, watch out. All right, guys, let's load up and get out of here. With the confrontation behind her, Carrie strives to put it all into perspective. Later, Cheaters will update you on her progress. But next, Cheaters presents the suspect from the Renee Trudgett case. The suspect explains his side in the most infamous case in Cheaters history. Identity withheld. Age 30. The suspect stops by to give his take on the day he stabbed Joey Greco. I never really plan to stab anybody. That's I'm, I know I have a little bit of a temper, but I don't see myself as a killer, someone that would try and do that. When they shoved me, it was just kind of like everything shifted, the boat and the water, and we all fell. And it could have easily been anybody. It could have been one of those security guards grabbed me or myself. The outcome of the situation was pretty bad, and I feel really guilty for that. And I think it could have went different ways if I wouldn't shoved a little bit and start riled up like that. I don't think I would have stabbed anybody. We got back up off my boat. You know what I'm saying? Y'all need to go. Go, go, go. No! No! You no! Bitch! 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 Sandra, I really, I have no need to talk to her. I haven't seen her in a long time, and it was just a bad mistake, you know? Like I said earlier, I was just young and immature. And it was an easy way out. <laughs> and I just, I don't know, I, she's out of the picture. I don't care to ever see her or ever talk to her. Only thing I just care about right now is Renee and my family. I want my family back. I know you, all right? Oh, he's bleeding. Oh, oh my God. Come on, come on, come on. Easy, easy, I'm out of here. Come on, come on. What the f is wrong with you, Mitchell? No, no, you're not coming home. You are not coming home. You're not gonna see me anymore. Okay. Yeah, I'm all right. Got here. Somebody, come on. Let's go. Right now, Renee, I just love her to death, and I've changed. I'm, I'm not immature. I, I know how to control my temper and my anger management classes. They help me out a lot, get in touch with my inner self. Just learn to control your tempers and your rage, and realize that there's a lot better things in life if, if you just better yourself and try and do as much good as possible. That negativity never really gets you nowhere. Stupid, y'all, <laughs> have gotten the better of her in the past, but she prays that stage of her life is over after this debacle. Brandon Cross comes clean regarding his relationship with the companion and takes full responsibility for his duplicitous nature. 
After stating his undying love for his new fiance, Cross states that Carrie was always far too domineering and he never felt secure with her, which eventually was the downfall of their relationship. Candy says that she and Cross are in love and are planning a fall wedding. Candy thanks cheaters for getting the whole mess out into the open so they can start their life afresh. Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. You're just sitting on a bench, by the way. What are y'all doing, man? You're not cheating. You're, cheater. you're, you're, it, yes. sorry. you're sorry. You're not sorry. If you couldn't you handle your business. I ain't the one you want to play with. Oh, 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 I was got you. From cheaters' surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual... I'm Joey Greco, and thank you for tuning in to another installment of Cheaters. Please meet Michelle Jenkins, a woman concerned about her unstable relationship. Fed up with the excuses, Michelle calls cheaters to investigate her concerns. Michelle Jenkins, age 36, an account manager deeply concerned about the recent change in her boyfriend's demeanor. Uh, Michael is actually younger than me. Um, I saw a successful young man with a head on his shoulder, going somewhere, so I was like, great. <laughs> Something better than what I had. <laughs> All of a sudden, it's like things started changing after New Year's. He needed to move on with his mom. He just needed to clear his head, make sure this is what he want all of a sudden. And I was really like, what's going on? You know, where's all this coming from? It's nothing, I just need to, I just need to go be with my mom. I can't tell you not to be with your mother and not to help your mom, that's your mom. But at the same time, we had something here, so what? I want to call and I can't, because I'm afraid he might go off. You know, he might not answer. You know, not even to explain to me what's, what, what it, where is our relationship? What's going on with our relationship? I don't know what I'm going to do. Everything that's I done been through and that I'm going through now, I don't know. If I find out it is somebody else, I might just cut his. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Michael Turner, age 28. An IT consultant suspected of providing misinformation about his recent whereabouts. Investigation Day 4. Cheater's detective set up a perimeter around the home the suspect shares with his mother. An hour into the investigation, the suspect emerges and dashes off down the road. A few miles away, the suspect pulls into a church parking lot. Agents watch as suspect Michael Turner heads inside the chapel for an evening prayer meeting. Once inside, the suspect sits and chats with another parishioner. Detectives wonder if it's only Bible study or does this spell damnation for Michelle's relationship? Sometime later, Turner and this unknown female stroll to their cars. The pair follow each other to a nearby bar where they duck inside for a quick drink. After their nightcap, 
The couple surface, and Turner, being the consummate gentleman, walks his companion to her car, where they say goodbye before going their separate ways. Investigation Day 6. Operatives once again set up outside the suspect's mother's residence. Agents on stakeout spot a familiar car pulling up to the Turner home. The companion, whose identity remains withheld, emerges and meets the suspect on his front doorstep, where they share a hug and kiss hello. Afterward, Turner and his companion walk hand in hand to the car and pull away. Detectives track the couple down to a nearby restaurant, where Turner opens the door for his lady friend, and they enter. Once inside, the two dine and have some drinks. Turner's treachery intensifies, as shown in this recorded phone call with Michelle. After arriving at the companion's home, the couple stumble inside. A few hours later, the pair surface, and the companion drives Turner home. Investigation Day 11. Outside the Turner home, cheaters ops spy the suspect checking under his car's hood. After tinkering a bit, Turner fires it up and it purrs like a kitten. Now with his ride running smoothly, the suspect heads inside to clean up. Sometime later, agents catch a glimpse of freshly changed Turner waiting on his front porch. Minutes later, the companion once again pulls up out front. Turner grabs shotgun and the twosome depart. After a brief pursuit, the couple arrive at a department store. Agents on foot follow Turner and his companion inside, where the two are found perusing the fragrance aisle. Turner's companion tests many different types of cologne before finding the one she likes best. The couple then make their way to the register before walking hand in hand to her vehicle. PIs track the twosome to the companion's residence where they disappear inside for the remainder of the evening. With confirmation of Turner's improprieties, Cheaters prepares a report for Michelle. Coming up, the confrontation. Armed with evidence of the suspect's infidelities, Cheaters contacts Michelle to divulge the results of the investigation. Resolute and determined, Michelle prepares to face an unpleasant revelation. Michelle, thanks for being with us tonight. I know this is a very sensitive situation, and I hate to jump right into it, but are you ready to see the information that our detectives have found out about Michael? Yeah. As our investigation began, we had a detective that was stationed outside of Michael's mother's home. He was observed as he left, gets into his car, and was followed until he arrived at a church that wasn't too far away. Now he goes inside. We did see Michael engage in a conversation with this young lady. After a few moments, they exit the church. He walks her to her car, opens the door, she gets in, he jumps in his car. They follow one another until they arrive at a small bar that wasn't too far away. They go inside. After having some drinks and spending some time there, they exit, walks her to her car. She leaves, and then he returns home. On this evening, Michelle, our detective was again stationed outside of Michael's mom's home. A car pulls up that is all too familiar from a previous days of investigation. They go back to her apartment, but on this evening, 
Michael stayed there the rest of the night. <laughs> Where is he? Come with me, we'll call the detective from the vans, okay? Now let me see if I can reach your field operative and get an update for you. Yeah, we just finished up with the uh, briefing. What do you have on your end? He picked her up from her apartment with his car. Yeah. And they just drove down to a, a little park by Botman Lake. Yeah. They're just sitting on a bench by the lake, hanging out watching planes. Okay. All right. Good enough. All right, bye. That's on my bed. Okay, right there. Okay, right there, right there, down there. All right, everybody out, everybody together, everybody out, everybody together. Keep that baby. So I 
prove this. That's good. Somebody you know what prove I mean? this. But I don't want you Keep either. It. Just I'm like that. Lie. Because yeah. once a liar, always a liar, Michael. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, so, so, so you going to let me ride back by myself then? So? All right, fine. Michael, yeah, that's how I should go have them. Go go home, because it's everyone else's problem. Go go home. Go home. back to so y'all look up so called crib. Go to go home. Go to go home. And she likes to eat. I can tell. So hey, do what you do. Because it's everyone else's problem. Hey. Because what he did to her, he's gonna do it to you. So, what you did to me, you're doing it to her. And you're gonna keep repeating the cycle. So. After the emotionally charged confrontation, Michelle takes a moment to quell her anger. Stay tuned as Cheaters reveals her plans. But next, we'll visit with Terry Sprinkles companion from the Proles case. Willing to come forward, Terry talks candidly of the night she was confronted on Cheaters. Terry Sprinkles, age 29. Terry visits to reveal how her life has changed since being exposed on Cheaters. Well, actually, at first it was just a nice, quiet walk to the cars. We saw the trucks and didn't, didn't think anything about it, but... Um... When all those people jumped out of the van, I'm like, what? Who is this? What is going on? And he takes off. Then I realized what happened. What is this? Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? I'm a f***ing on the What is going on? It's Who are you? Wait. What the f***? What is this? What are you on the What the f***? Don't touch me! What is this? What is this? I'm a f***ing on the What are you doing, Jerry? Don't touch me! Yeah, he called me a few times, begging to, for me to come back, um, trying to finally explain, you know, uh, why he did what he did. And I listened to him, because like I said, he's sweet, but he's got time for all that mess. That's just mess. I know better than that. I deserve better than that. <gasps> Who is she? Who are you? Oh, shut up, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to you. confrontation, Michelle, with the help of her brother, moved all of Turner's remaining things out of her apartment. Following some serious soul-searching, Michelle feels ready to put all the bad times behind her and start a new life. 
Michael Turner responds to the incident by offering his opinion on why the relationship hit a brick wall. Turner says that Michelle shut him out and had never fully recovered from her bad relationship with her ex-husband. The suspect's companion refused to be interviewed by Cheater's producers.